So the first thing we want to do is, uh, you know, you should be logged into um, my real source. This is my home screen. Uh, first off, good morning, everybody. My name's Chris, like Debbie said. Uh, thank you for joining us on this webinar. It's going to be something on cloud CMAs. Um, there's a couple ways that you can do them to get the information out to your clients. Please do not underestimate the realtor's importance in preparing a cloud or in preparing a CMA. Um, some realtors don't give it enough attention. They think they just find a couple of comps and they set it out there. We're always looking for something as realtors that differentiate us from everything else, everything else being all the online um, resources that are available, the next door neighbor that's telling your potential client what the home is worth, that they will pay you know, $300,000 for a home that's only worth 200,000 until you actually put the stake in the yard and then those people never show up. All that stuff goes into why you want to take your time to prepare a CMA. A CMA is not an appraisal, but it's what a good CMA is what's going to differentiate you from the other agents that they may be talking to for a listing presentation. And it's also going to help demonstrate your knowledge and your experience in an industry that none of the third party sites that give all these online estimates of what homes are going to be based on logarithms and mathematical formulas and everything else. Your expertise in your local market area using Market Monitor and all the other tools that uh, Paragon offers and your brokers offer um, is what's going to help differentiate you to become that real, uh, you know, the real estate expert that when you sit down and talk to them, you're going to be able to help set their expectations of what they can reasonably uh, expect to get for the price of their home. So it's it's it, if you get good at it, you can do it rather quickly, but it is not something that should be done in haste just to throw on a table to hope to get a listing. The, um, we need to spend a lot more time understanding how valuable a CMA is when you prepare it, especially since you're going against all the other estimates out there that are basically software programs. So having said that, with my little speech, we're gonna talk about CMAs today. And I uh, hope everybody can see my screen. If I go too fast, just jump in with Debbie real quick. Um, my screen on Paragon looks a little different than everybody else's just because of the way I have it configured. Um, we can, you can change that you know, later on. It starts with, you get a phone call from a client and they say, hey, I'm thinking of selling my home or, or you know, I just kind of want to know what my home is worth and everything else. Uh, if you think you're going to be doing the CMA in preparation for a listing appointment, the first thing you want to do is get the tax information on the home. The reason you want to get the tax information on the home is in general, that's where you're going to find out the basic structural details of the home as the county has it reported. Um, you can come right up here to where it says tax and you have a couple options. You have the realist tax search, and you have BSA, BSNA online. BSNA online is the third party source that a majority of the municipalities put their tax information. Realist takes that information from BSNA, BSNA if it's there and puts it over to them. There's some different features that you can get from the Realist tax search that you can't get from BSNA online, but BSNA online is where you should always start. Now, for those of you that are also my real source members and you're on this webinar, meaning you are my real source member, if it's a, some of the municipalities in, um, uh, charge you a nominal fee, it's $2, to get the information. I've paid the $2 on my credit card for some of those areas just because I wanted to get the information. You can usually go to Realist and get the information at no cost. However, in those uh, majority of those municipalities in Macomb County that charge you that fee, if you go to BSNA online through my real source, my real source pays that fee for you and you don't have to, uh, you should not have to pay that $2 um, charge. So anyway, we start with BSNA online to get the house information. Um, if, to, if you don't know how to use BSNA online, you just come in here and you select the municipality. I, I already selected one, Shelby Charter Township. I'm gonna use my parents' home. I'm gonna enter their address. And then all you need is a street and you don't need court, street, road, whatever, and just click search, it should come up. And that's their home and you click on that, and you'll have all the information. While this loads, um, while it's loading, there it is. Here's where we can see the square footage. 
It's listed right here. This is a, a public record data, PRD. And so, you know, we, I've shown up on listing appointments. People are like, oh, no, my home's actually 1,800 square foot because we put the little sunroom on. Well, do, do you want to go argue that with the, the municipality right before you sell it, which they may come out and do all kinds of things? Uh, wonder why you did a, you know, in addition to the house without pulling permits or all that. Just basically use this as the square footage of the home. Um, and you can also see some of the tax information. This is where you're going to see if the property is homesteaded and all that, which could make a difference for the taxes. And 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 I always check this too. There's been a couple of times when I've gone out where I've noticed people are behind a couple several um, cycles on their tax things, which could create an issue when you go to sell it online, or right, when you go to sell it later on down the line. So, anyways, we see the basic information. We see the school district. Although a CMA is not an appraisal, most appraisers uh, stay within uh, municipalities within school districts. So if you were on a property that was bordering two school districts, you may want to just uh, keep your CMA and the property search to those school districts. School districts are what determines your tax rates here in Michigan. You see a little bit other information on BSNA. This is where you can find out. Um, about uh, you know the, the number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, all that other stuff right in here. So the other thing I look at this is this tells me that there are two owners, a Nixon, George, and M. It doesn't identify who M is. In this case, it's Marie, who's my mother. But I've also had cases where I've been called in for a listing appointment, and I've I've gone to prepare a CMA, and I pull this out, and I'll see uh, you know Nixon, George, and the estate of Marie Nixon. That tells me. I need to find out who is that uh, person handling the estate because they need to be there. I've had I've had incidences where a family was trying to sell it without one of the other family members being present because for whatever reason they were in a disagreement. So you have to make sure that whoever is identified on the owner and taxpayer information is going to be present at that CMA presentation or at that and or at that listing appointment. You don't want to waste your time and go out there and do all this present presenting to just George and later on realize that Marie never wanted to sell the house and, and you know, she's not going to be party to any of this. If George just signed all those documents by himself, you don't have a legal contract to sell that home and you could be, you know, two days before closing and everything falls apart. So that's the doom and gloom part of it, but still check the owner and taxpayer information to make sure the right people are going to be present or that you're presenting the information to the right people. Um, if I didn't know who the and M was and George had called me, I'd call him up and say, hey, George, by the way, I pulled up your tax information. There's an and M there. Uh, who is that? And uh, he would tell me and I said, okay, are they going to be present as well? Um, and, and so you would go from there. So you start your search with BSNA. You get the tax information, and from there, you you come up um, into Paragon and you go to your search button. Now my search screen is going to look a little different or a residential condo. Uh, we're going to search solds and pendings. The 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 solds are what you really need. That's going to closely align to what an appraiser used. Actives and pendings are also good to include in a CMA. A lot of appraisers don't typically include actives or pendings because um, those kind of tell you what the market's being listed at, but not actually what the market is doing. So I still include them in my CMA. Some agents don't include them. Some brokers prefer you don't include them. So always check with your broker to see if they have a preference on that. But I usually include, include my actives, my solds, and my pendings. So that's what our search criteria is going to be. I know from BSNA that the house was 1,500 square feet, right around 1,600. So I'm going to I'm going to search for 1,400 to um, 1,700. And again, the when you do on the search for a CMA, the more criteria you put in, the narrow your search parameters become, the less homes that may come up. So just I, I always go a little bit looser at first to see how many homes you, you come up with. You want right around five good homes. They say three sold, three to five good homes to do a, a decent CMA. I'm going 14 to 1700. Um, they have three bedrooms. They have one bath and they do have a basement. And I'm going to put yes for the basement. Oops, yes. Okay. 
you can, this part, we're just doing your basic search. Now, because I know a specific home I'm gonna search in, I'm, instead of putting their address in here and doing things like that, oh, one other thing, since we have closed in there, we have to select the date range. Um, for actives and pendings, you don't need a date range, but we have closed and I don't wanna go back forever in history. I'm gonna start out with um, um, 90 days back and see how many homes come up. Right now, we still have 6,700 homes because we haven't selected an area. I'm gonna use the search by map function. Uh, you can either draw an area if you wanted to or come in here and I'm just gonna do your basic radius search. You type in their address. and hit search. The map centers right on that area. I'm gonna do a one mile radius search. Hit search radius. It'll show me all the homes in that area that meet that criteria. Um, right now there are four. If you look, uh, these, these, the reason there are uh, a blue circle with two in it means they're very close together. And if I expanded my map a little, you should see where those homes are. Um, Okay, still within the search area. I got four homes right now, so um, I want to go back to my criteria. I would like to get a few more homes. Oh, it's showing I got seven. Okay, yep. I have seven homes rather. Here are my seven homes. Um, one, two, three, four are closed, two are pending, and one is gonna be active back on market. So now you got seven homes that looks like pretty good. You would go through at this point and the you would- uh, Hey Chris, yep. the ABO was accepting backup offers. Oh, accept it, yeah, accepting yep. backup offers. All right. Um, checking the one question I have here. I can't see it all. It's on another screen. Um, Debbie, what's the full question there? And what someone is trying to sell without t telling, I'm truncated, can't read it all. In which someone is trying to sell without telling someone involved. So doesn't the title search find this kind of info? Who's on the title? Yep. The, so I'm sure Chris can answer that. So when you had mentioned the fact that looking in real list, you saw that there was more than one family member or a trust. He says, doesn't the title search find this kind of info? Yeah, the title search will, but here's the problem. You don't typically do a title search until after you have the listing. So if you had a listing agreement signed by one of the parties that were actually on the title and the other parties didn't sign it, you in essence have an invalid listing agreement. And so the title search will do that. Now you've already, um, you've already put the property, uh, you've already done the listing agreement, you've already put the property on the market, you've already advertised the property. And if you've done your um, job right and, and you priced it correctly. You may be even having a couple offers come in and you're getting ready to start negotiating with a possible buyer. All that by the time the title could get back to you. And at that case, the title company comes back and says, hey, we found somebody else. And you, that they get in touch with that other, those other parties that were on the title and they say, we're not agreeing to sell in the house. Now you gotta stop the whole process because you don't have a valid listing agreement. Your broker does not have a valid listing agreement to list that property. So I, it's, it's, it's not 100%, but you know, there could still be a little bit room for error, but it's better to check BSNA or Realist to see who's listed on the title before you go to that listing agreement or before you prepare that CMA so that you don't end up spinning your wheels. And yes, the title search, will find who all those people are and stop the process, but you don't want to get so far along in the process and then go into your broker and say, hey, by the way, that you know $350,000 home that I just listed that we got three offers on, um, two of them cash and we're going to close in 14 days. Um, guess what? We found another, uh, you know, we have a cousin out there who's on the title and he says he's not going to sign the selling, uh, uh, he doesn't want to sell the home. Uh, we kind of come pull it off the market till we get this resolved. That doesn't look good for you. It doesn't look good for your broker and, and nobody wants that. So I just use it as a precaution to check just to make sure. Um, I've had not too many cases, but a couple of cases where 
um, people have tried that and I see that there's another family on there and I, I just gassed them and one of them told me straight out, I'm I'm the personal representative for my mom's estate. The other one's my my sister. Nobody in the family likes his sister. She's been very difficult to deal with, and we want to sell the home without her involved. And I said, well, I'm sorry. I, I can't even take the listing agreement. In that case, unless his sister's going to be present to sign the paperwork. And they go, no, no, we don't want her to do it. We'll find another realtor. I said, thank you very much. Goodbye. And that was it. So um, I've also had the case where... A husband was out of town on business and the wife called me and I sat down with them and then when I to do some preliminary information and then I said well I need him here to sign all the papers she goes no no it's all right I can sign the papers on his behalf I was not going to sit down for that second meeting and waste my time um, anyways that's why you look just to be sure and the title company that's their job to find that later on but you don't even want to start the process if all the uh, legal parties are not uh, present to do uh, to sign or hear the presentation. So hopefully that answered your question, Mark. Anyways, uh, back to it. We here's our search that came up on these properties, and then you would go through one by one and see the homes that. Um, sorry, um, on the on the close, starting with the close, you want to go through and see the homes that most closely match their property. Uh, if there weren't homes that match their property, you would either go back and you would change your search criteria and try to get a couple. And you go through them and you'd look at the pictures um, and, and kind of get to understand the quality of fit uh, finishes in the area. Maybe you haven't seen the inside of this home yet. So you want to go there and kind of look at for pricing strategy. You want to look at good, better, best. And if, if it looks like it's an updated home on the inside and it's got, uh, you know, everything's updated in there, that would be the best price. And one that needs a lot of work and everything, you might say that's good. And then the better is in the middle. So when you do get to that home and you're kind of looking around and say, okay, now that I've had an opportunity to see the home, based on what's in the area, um, you're more in the better category. So your pricing should fall in this range. Again, I can't. I cannot stress the importance of being knowledgeable of your local market area and what the homes are doing in that area when you walk into that house to, to you know, demonstrate your, your ability to be their real estate expert. And, and you know, you just don't want to go, homes are selling at this much per square foot. Here's what you can get for your home. So we've done our homework. We've looked at all the homes. Uh, I'm going to randomly select some just because it'll be easier. Uh, the class, I'm going to take these closed ones and this pending one. Now, I'll take this one as well. Uh, for these two are double right here, actually, Debbie. Um, I'm not going to accept this one just so you can see. So, now that we've selected the homes after we've done them, there's a couple things we can do. The first thing is a very quick CMA, depending on who your client is and, and you know what you want to do with them. You you hit the checked over here, and those there are those five properties right there that we're going to use. You come over to the uh, right side of your screen where it says reports. Oh, let me close this. Go all the way down here where it says CMA. And if you click on that icon or little drop down tab, you have CMA Quick View Summary and Spreadsheet. The quick view just gives you what it is, a quick view of the three home or, or the homes you have selected. There are two pages, so you can go to the second page and see. It doesn't compare it back to your comparable because it doesn't know what property you're comparing it to. It just shows you a quick view of the homes that are selling in the area, okay, that you selected out of your search. The next report under that tab is the CMA summary. This is the one you really want to look at. It shows you the address, the municipality, zip code, the asking price, square foot. This is for the actives, this is for the solds, and this is for the pendings. It's a one sheet um, property uh, report. I sometimes, uh, on a side note, print this out if I'm doing an open house, so that if I'm holding a house open and I know there's several in the area that have sold or on the market, um, and some of the more savvy buyers come into the house at the open house say hey are there any other homes for sale in the area i can say why yes there are the, you know there's this home here that's sold and this home that's pending and all that other stuff so i just kind of keep that in the in with me when i'm doing an open house so if someone asks me a particular question i have that this report is really easy to look at and uh use 
There is some customization features to it. If you've taken our Paragon class, anything that says customize up here with it, if you just click on customize fields, you can, you can change these headings to be what you want. I had one client that all they wanted to see was the bedrooms and the bedroom sizes. So I came in here and changed all these fields. They didn't care about the square foot, the sellings and all that. They were in a very specific area that they were searching. So I, they, I didn't need the municipality. I didn't need the zip code. So you have the ability to create, customize this simple report for your clients as needed. To do that, you come in here, customize fields. This is for the active bar. As you can see, you have active, sold, and pendings. Unfortunately, it's not a global change. You got to change each level. This is everything that you see on the screen right now. So if I didn't want the year built for some reason, I could just remove that. If I didn't want um, the sold price per square foot on that screen because we're on the active screen or the sold price, I could remove all that. Um, and then you hit save. Now my headings up top all change. And so same if I want to change the sold area right here, customized fields, change your drop down to sold. And I can add, uh, do a search up here for bedrooms. Bedroom one floor clubbing, covering. I could do bedroom one length, width, bedroom two length, width, bedroom three length, width, and hit add. Those all come, they will appear as headings and I can, you know, drop them and drag them however I want. I don't want the year built now because I'm going to have too many headings up there. They don't care about the car garage. In that neighborhood, everyone had a two-car garage. Uh, they don't care about the pricing. I'm just showing you how you can add and delete things um, quickly so that you can make the report customized to meet what it is your client wants to see. You don't have to just give them a generic report. Um, we'll save that. Now, as you can see, in this heading here, I got rid of everything. They can see the bedroom one length and width, bedroom two length and width, bedroom three length and width. So this actually, I did that for one of my clients. Uh, it became super useful because he kept looking at homes and the first, the first bedroom was really big and the second bedroom were what I considered standard, 10 by 12, 11 by 12, all in the area. And he kept saying, I want bigger bedroom, bigger bedrooms. Well, in his price point in the area he was able to look at, they just weren't, you know, he wasn't seeing the connection. So I, I took a quick CMA like this and, and all these categories, all I included up there was the asking price and the, and the bedroom sizes. And when he was able to see it in front of him like this, um, represented it so that he could see all the homes that, hey, yeah, they all are 12 by 11, 13, but they're all about the same. Then he started understanding it. My job as a realtor became that much easier when I started showing him homes after that. So again, that's how you customize that report. You just come up here into fields and then you, you select the status, active, sold, or pending. Those are the only three I'm showing in my report right now. And then you just come in and you either add from the left over to here or remove to the right over uh, to get rid of it. And then, of course, save it. Now, once you make these changes, it will be there every time you do a CMA for um, from there on out until you go in and change things. So that's one of the ways to do a very quick CMA to get to your client. Another thing in the CMA summary report, it shows you what the high list price and the high sell price and the low, and it gives you the average right here and the median. If we, a lot of people, um, if you think back to your high school st stats days when we all had uh, high school math, the difference between average and median, average takes all the properties and divides by the total number of property to come up with an average number. Median is they take away the usually the highs and the lows or sometimes any group of anomalies that don't look quite right. And then they divide by that number to give you a more accurate representation without the outliers. So if you're you're looking in a subdivision and then all of a sudden one home so, sold super high because they did all these upgrades to it, the median then what everything else is selling around it, the median price would be the price point you would want to talk to in that area versus the average because it'll get rid of that thing. Or you could just if you select all similar homes yourself, 
when you do a CMA, then you want the you want to use the average price. In this case, they're pretty similar. Um, anyways, that's what's on this report. That's the quick CMA report, and and you can present that if you just wanted to send it to somebody or a client that you know uh, rather well, and you don't need to do the full, full blown report. So the reason why we're here is to understand how to do a full blown uh, cloud CMA report, which is also going to help set you apart from everybody else. So before we jump into that, uh, let's see if there's any more questions or anything else I can answer, we'll take care and fire those up. And Debbie, do you have another poll you need to send down or are we good on polls? No polls, I only had the one for today, but I think I like if we could launch a poll next time, see if anybody's customized anything in their, in their Paragon. All right, we're going to take about a two-minute break right now because I forgot to bring my water bottle down right now, and uh, I need to get something to drink. So I'm going to mute myself, and, and Debbie, unless you want to pick it up, we're just going to take a quick um, little break. It's about 10.30. I'll be back around 10.32, and we'll go into how to do cloud CMA and take your CMA to the next level. Excellent, gang. So we'll see you back in two minutes. Okay, we're going to get going. Uh, hopefully everybody's back on board. I appreciate the, the little break there. Thank you very much. So we've gone ahead and we've seen back here the reports on, oh, the last report under CMA, I'll just show it to you real quick as a spreadsheet. It basically, you can customize this as well. Um, it shows you all of them that are, are, you know, it's kind of like a little quick what's going on there. Um, one other thing with this, CMA summary back to that. If you wanted to, you can either export this or if you wanted to email this, you could email this to your client. Just click on email. Um, you have to do uh, CMA, uh, what is that called? Summary report. Add that over here to where the emails are. Oops, want to get rid of this one. MLS client view, you want to remove that. Sorry, that's my default, it automatically comes up. CMA summary, I'm going to add that. And then if I just hit compose an email, put in my client's name, it, it would get this actual report. Would You could email this report to them. So that's how quickly you can turn around and send it to your client. You can send that directly from Paragon. Again, this is kind of like what we call a, a quick CMA. Um, doesn't have much to it, but it, but it gives them a quick visual representation. So we've done our search. Uh, we have our, our five properties selected. So now we're gonna do an actual CMA through Cloud CMA. There's two ways to get there. 
you can the best way sorry once you have your search done and you have the property selected you come up here to where it says actions just across your top bar right here and you go to cloud cma so again once you have the property selected from your search by clicking on them uh, on the ones you want and getting them to highlight green you select actions and come down here to cloud cma click on that this automatically takes you to cloud cma and it automatically um why this is loading mark uh, how do you count for different school districts in the CMA? Um, I, I would not select those properties. I would try to find properties that are within the same school district. Uh, appraisers pay more attention to school districts and they start with municipalities and they try to stay within the municipality, but certainly school districts matter. So um, I would not just select those properties for a CMA or if, if, if you're gonna be on the borderline and weren't sure, I would put the, the school district you wanted as one of your search criteria that only those properties within that uh, school district uh, appeared in your CMA. So you can either filter them out when you're checking them to see what school district they are and not select them. Uh, if you are absolutely pressed to use properties that are in a different school district because you're in an area where you can't find similar properties, go ahead and use that, but, but you just gotta kinda watch uh when you when you use those hopefully that answered it okay so as we as i said you click on cloud cma and it brings you right here to create a cma report the first these headings criteria listing customize and publish you will always see across any one of these tabs when you go in they always look the same so the first page is always criteria you always want to name the report a bit later but um Georgia Marie, you can call it whatever you want. This is what's gonna appear on the cover page. Um, if you do put in private notes, those are only notes that you can see. They, they don't go to your client or anybody else, but it may help you. Um, if you wanna put in memory joggers or just little things that they talked about that you wanna remember when you pull this up again, it, it will show up only in the private notes. The subject property now, here's where we put in the property we pulled up in the tax report and it's, it auto populates for you. Um, you pull it up, actually it's not Utica, it's Shelby Township, but the zip code's right. It, as you see, it already pulled in the square footage, the bedrooms and the bath, the type of property, and um, you could select an option. It's, you know, the, uh, the property subtype if you wanted to. Um, I'm just gonna leave that. Advanced info, if you wanted to, you could click on that. Put in some of this information if you wanted to as well. It is not needed for the report. If you had a cover photo of the property, you could use it. If not, um, CMA defaults, there's a couple pages that it defaults to where it'll pull up an aerial of the, of the property. Down below, as you can see, we already selected those properties from the uh, when we did our search. Uh, by going to Actions, Cloud CMA, it pulls those properties over here for you already. I do not what recommend the quick and dirty by proximity uh, for a CMA. The problem is, is they don't do any filtering. They don't look at anything. Um, they kind of just pull properties in and, and you see they have a very limited search range. Again, it, it comes down to what kind of agent do you want to be? Do, do you want to become their trusted real estate advisor and show up with knowledgeable information where you've actually done your homework? Or do you just want to let every, the computer keep generating everything for you? I try to use this as much as possible where I make the selection and look at the properties first before I include them in my CMA. So the next, either at top where it says fetch listing or down below where it says fetch listing, uh, click on either one of those and it will fetch the listings and it'll take you to the listing page of the CMA report. So it's spinning. We're good there. Here is where you organize the listings. You have the subject property. Um, you can set a price right now if you wanted to. Um, 
Some brokers prefer you give CMAs with no price in it. You just talk to it. Some brokers prefer that you go in and you speak as to a price range and let the owner select the price um, because you're not telling them then. Then they're taking the information and selecting it. Some brokers want you to just put in a price and go to it. So kind of whatever your broker gives you a little guidance on or what you've been doing is your best practices, you can either enter a price here. We can put 240000 and you also have a price guide net sheet if you have to. You could type in uh, if they have more uh, for first mortgage or whatever the company is. And the amount is, uh, say they owe 100000 I put a negative. I don't think so. Yep. And it, and it's not, you don't have to do the negative part, like to get it to come out. And if they had something else, you could type that in here. You can kind of do your net sheet here um, if you wanted to. That's what that's all for. Get rid of that. Uh, yep, I don't want any adjustments in there right now. Um, as you can see, here are the comps, the, the actives and the sold and, the, and everything else. They're giving you a range of 241 to 256. Uh, for the alls, for the solds, they're giving you a range of 237 to 251. I'm putting right there at 240. Here are the properties down here on the listing. If you scroll further down, you can select a sort option. There are different things you can select to sort by. Or if you just wanted to have your closed on top, Closing with the most expensive one uh, uh, first. All you do is, is go to where your hand or your arrow becomes um, a hand. And then you just click in the center of that box and just drag up to change the order. So now I have the, two, the most expensive first and the second one last. I want the pending um, next and the actives last or i could put the actives up here at the very beginning even though it's accepting backup offers and then the pending you can customize all those if you realize you forgot a listing just click on add a listing um, and it'll take you back and you put in the mls number and it'll automatically add this back into here you see over here it gives you a summary summary of the prices and some of the other stuff and it includes a nice map Here's your subject property. It's in purple. Here, green is um, the actives. Orange is pending, and reds are the sold. I kind of like the way this all looks. We're in the listing section. You can either hit here, customize report, and it'll take you to the next section. Oh, I'm sorry. One thing before we go. If you wanted to put in details and adjustments for a particular property, um, let's say this one I know closed but they had six thousand dollars or seven thousand dollars in concessions so i want to let the my my client know when they go in yeah that one's sold for two hundred sixty seven thousand. however the owner also gave up seven grand in concessions so the reality is it actually sold for two hundred sixty thousand. so you can come in and make some changes to it and you come down here and where it says adjustment name um concessions Oops. And um, you come in, because this was a negative amount, you have to put in as a negative or it won't, it would add it to the total. If we hit save, now you see the total adjustments was minus 7,260. Let's say somebody um, didn't have a garage. So let's say this property down here didn't have a garage and we want to add to it what the value would have been had they had a garage. This is all hypothetical. You could come in and put in a, a garage and you say that's worth, that would get that property $10,000 more. So you would put $10,000 in here. So you can make the adjustment to that property to see, um, to see uh, um, that what the true cost would actually be if you wanted to do adjustments. 
I don't recommend getting too involved in the adjustments and, and all that other stuff unless it's really something that's really extreme out there. Just kind of make sure if you do your search criteria correctly and only include those properties that are very similar where you can to your property, you won't have to mess around with adjustments too much. And I'm gonna take these out so my CMA looks okay. So now we hit customize report. And this is where we get into the best part of cloud CMA, which is allowing you, the agent, to create your own kind of reports. Uh, up top here is where it all starts. You have the theme, the layout, the template, the cover, and the font. Uh, the theme, you have just, my suggestion is next time when you're bored on looking at everybody's newborn baby being the cutest in the world or grandbaby, and, and you're thinking, nope, my kid's cuter than that, Come here, click on this, and go through some of these reports so you see the different colors. The modern reports give you a different type of font and some of the photo settings than you do with the classic. Um, most of these, you can get your, uh, you can find your company colors here. Uh, my, my colors are most closely aligned with the blue and the silver here. They have the red and the whites and all this other stuff. If it doesn't say cl uh, modern, then it's the classic one. And I'll show you um, vivid blue and gray. You see how this looks a little bit different on the vivid, these, these couple of pages here. I'll go back to the, my, the way the writing is and, and just the general layout. If we go back to the modern, blue and gray. Got to find it. Hold up. Modern, vivid, blue and gray. See, it's a little bit different. It's a more rounded font. My photo, instead of being a big giant square, is in this little circle. So that's how it does it. So this is this is where you pick your colors. You have the classics down here and everything else like that. I like the modern vivid blue and gray. So I'm gonna hit choose theme. It applies that. And then you have layout. There are different layouts. You can do a photo with a big map, two photos, photo with max data, all this is stuff you can you can come through and click on and it'll change the layout of your report depending on how big or how small you want it. Right now I got three column comparisons. Um, cover, um, these are premium, you have to pay in order to get these specialty covers, okay? If you wanna pay the upcharge um, to, to get those, you can, there's a promotion here. I just stick with the standard cover and then you can pick your fonts. There are different fonts you can go in and select and you can play around with all that to see how you want your CMA to look. So you have the ability to come in and change some of this stuff. Um, over here are all the items that can go into your CMA. It starts with, these are all drop down arrows. You have introduction, uh, title five report, So uh, they are all over here. You have your title page. Here's what this looks like. Click on it, it gives you a quick preview. It says comparative market analysis. Here's the subject property, took an aerial overhead view. Um, the name of the property. So I'm gonna go back in and change it to Shelby Township because I know it's Shelby Township, not Utica. And uh, Their name and my picture and my, my broker as it's stored down below here. I will caution you one thing, the report automatically uh, prints the date uh, you print the report, it's a default setting. So if you do this two days ahead of time, it's gonna appear two days ahead of time. So you may wanna, if you have the opportunity to print it quickly before you go to your clients. Um, so that's the title page, here's the cover letter. I don't have a cover letter and I know right now what's gonna pop up, so I don't want that in there. Agent resume. This is a custom page. I, for some reason, mine, I gotta, I gotta put it in the resume. You can create your own resume in here and add it. Uh, there's something in here about our company that I, I put in. Oh, no, that page, I changed it in my last class. Anything you don't want, you click on this red circle and it puts it back over here into your selections. Uh, here's the contact me page. Personally, I like to put this at the very end of the report, uh, not the first page, but at the very end. Again, it pulls in all this information that you have already loaded in uh, Paragon. It pulls it from Paragon. And I'll show you how to check that at the end here. Um, 
I, as I said, I like this contact me at the end of my report. So I just go up here and click in the middle of this box and drag that page all the way down to the end. And so that'll be my last page. Um, you have the map of all listings, some summary of comparable properties, and then CMA gives you this thing, Cloud CMA gives you a thing called the listing chapter, where actually if you're preparing a report, it comes in and says listings, and then you're, you're, it's branded back to you, and then everything that follows afterwards is everything that goes into the listings. You have details. And remember in the beginning, I selected three, uh, three property comparison. So here are three properties at a time compared. Um, photos, if you want to include the photos, you could. And those will all appear in your reports. Adjustments, if you had adjustments, you could include those. Um, also under listing, you have some other options, more photos, all the rest. So I'm going to come back here and my, my Instead of doing my three column, I'm going to go to photo with uh, with max data. So now if I go to my details, it'll show you the one page with um, accepting backup offers, all the data on it. And then the next page in that report following it is going to be the first dozen photos on one page for that property. All right here. And then if they had additional photos, all the rest would be on the second page if they had them. They don't, they don't have any, but it'll pull it for the other ones. You have your analysis chapter. Again, it gives you a nice little chapter heading that says analysis. If you want to make this report, you know, more like a book form. And here are all the items under analysis. And also over here on the left side, you have the online value analysis. Um, I'm going to add that and show you why. You have your comparable property statistics. It, you know, again, you can go through these. I'm not going to go through page by page and show them. You go through and look at them in time and see which one you want. The only one I highly recommend you keep in your CMA report is the one called online value analysis. And the reason why um, is because it's based off of the, the Zillow estimates. And on the on the day the property was listed or it closed it shows you what the Z, the zillow estimate was and what the sell price was so on this one on the day this one sold the zillow estimate was 268 it sold for 267 this was 246 sold for 244 this was 242 it sold for 239 i also look at the zillow estimate of the property on the day i go to do my cma because I'm fairly confident most of my clients that I'm going to go meet or customers soon to be clients have already looked at Zillow truly or something else. And I'm going to address that number when I see them. And it makes it really easy because the best part of this online value analysis report is this part right here. This information Zillow provides back to us as a report. And I love it because I, all I have to do is point to it and say, hey, here's a report. I know you saw what Zillow shows your house at. That's a little bit high. And by the way, let me show you a report that Zillow gave us of the properties that sold in the area. Zillow had them all estimated higher on the day they closed than what they actually closed for. So now you're not sitting down with someone that's expecting, again, as a trusted real estate advisor and wanting to set the seller's expectations. They're kind of thinking, hey, maybe I can get um, $243,000 for my house when the reality is the market might be more around the $240,000, $238,000 area. So you're going to go in and be able to set their expectations realistically, and this page really helps. That's why I like it because it's not our information. It's Zillow telling you, yep, um, we've been over by about $6,700 on our pricing, okay? And you can just go through these, some of these, um, and you can add and take out pa pa uh, pages as, needing, as needed. Um, features that sell, you could add that in. The only thing I wanna caution you is when you start adding photo pages and everything else, if you got six homes and you got three, uh, the, the data page and then three photo pages, that's 18 additional pages that end up in the CMA report, which could, um, 
end up being extremely long reports, 60, 80. I had one new agent that printed out a 98 page report to take their client. Those clients are gonna look at maybe the first three or four pages, then be totally um, not interested in the information. But go through all these and see them. Some of them are really good if you need a little bit of help. Um, nope, this is the wrong one. Some of them are already pre-formatted and filled out. So if you need a little bit of help, this one called Curb Appeal, First Impression That Lasts. You can include this page in your CMA report. If not, you don't have to include it, but at least understand some of the talking points, which helps you kind of script when you go in there of things of what you want to point out to them, first impressions at last. Again, to help ensure that you come across as a trusted real estate advisor when you walk in there and setting their expectations to, to list their property. Some of these that you can't edit, they are, uh, here's a good one, showing open house checklist. Some things you can go to, especially if you're a newer agent and you don't have some of these things already pre already developed. Some other agents already have these items developed on their own. And so they want to include their own pages. Um, Kim, you don't see uh, online value as a choice. It's under your, uh, go under listings. And that's where it'll be. If it's not under listings already, that means it's already in, it's already one of these tabs um, in here. It's one of these gray boxes. You just got to kind of find where it's at. It's called online value analysis. It should be there. Um, if it's, it'll be under, uh, 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 sorry, under analysis, not listings, analysis, online value analysis. If you click on, since I have all the, subcategories under analysis already in my under analysis chapter you won't see a heading over here on the left if i just get rid of a couple of these um, now i have an analysis tab and i have two items to select from so if you don't see an analysis over here on the left that means that online value analysis is somewhere over here in your report um, intelligent pricing and timing. Sometimes this can be a very useful tool. It's two pages to put in a CMA. If nothing else, if you don't want to include it in your CMA, you can always print this out separately and use it as talking points as part of your presentation. So these are all the pages that you can select from. You also have a really cool option uh, in Cloud CMA to add your own custom pages. So that marketing plan that I was talking about that you wanna put in here, you can include. Uh, if there's other information that you wanna include, you can include that. If you wanna include market stats, you've gone in there and you wanna show how the area is uh, doing and you know how to do the, the market stats for the current um, data, you can save that and pull that in. In order to do that, um, you just come over here to where your picture is on the far right side or where your initials may be. Click on that and it comes down here and it says custom pages. Click on custom pages and you have a couple options in here. Once it loads. You will see some of mine that are already, I actually did a CMA for somebody the other day in St. Clair Shore. So you'll see some of my custom eight pages. Here are the ones I created. You can come in and uh, always go back and, and um, edit them just by clicking on the pencil to edit or delete them. Um, I have a page called Your CMA Criteria Explained. For every CMA that I do, it's my second page. I address by the person's name and I tell them the homes, basically where I selected the homes, a little bit about it, my search criteria, what came up, what didn't come up, and all that other stuff. And I, I customize this as much as I want to. This is gonna be my main page. That's gonna be the probably the second page of my report that I use to let them know what I did uh, is a summary of the property. Very important that, that you can't stress this enough throughout, but I always put this note in there that this analysis is based on market activity at the time of the CMA was prepared. Market conditions are always changing. And at the time you actually list your home, the market may have shifted and the values may have changed. And then this is the key statement. This CMA is not an appraisal. You have to let them know that um, it's just very good practice. You are not, you're not a licensed appraiser. 
Uh, it's similar, but it is not an appraisal. So the, these are uh, this paragraph, these two bullet points are in every one of my CMAs on this custom page at the beginning. I can come here and rename it if I wanted to. I could put, uh, you know, K, my client, K, last name, client, your criteria, whatever you want to call that page, you can, um, and go from there. Those are custom pages. You can add pages by clicking add, uh, creating the title, then putting creating the information in there. Uh, if it's a Word document that you already have created, like a marketing plan, you just cut and paste it, and it'll load it all right in there. There's other stuff I've done where I've added a page, and I already had it done. I cut and pasted it and threw it in there and then made a few tweaks, and I was done. Those are for editing um, Word-type pages. If you had PDFs that you wanted to include, uh, you scroll all the way down to the bottom. It's a little bit backwards. It says Upload the PDF. So you click Upload the PDF. And then it'll bring up your um, desktop. And then you can just pull in whatever PDF that you have. Um, here was that listing. So here is your Z estimate for the day that, um, no, this one, this one. This was on the, Property I went to the other day for the CMA, here was the Z estimate for the day I pulled it out so that we would have a good talking point. Let's say I wanted to include that. I'm just showing you how to include a PDF that I already have saved. And then you just click open. Now it will load it as a document you can select later for any or, or one CMA or all your CMAs. Unfortunately, whatever you put in here stays in there. It's like a giant file on Cloud CMA. So some of the stuff that pertains specifically to a home, I go in and clean this out once in a while. As you can see, I also loaded the, the as I said, the property was in St. Clair Shores. Here's the market stats that I loaded because I want to include that in the CMA. So I got my custom pages. I have everything else. Now I'm going to go back to CMA. Oop, I should have opened up the one I was on. Here was that one I was working on. I'm going to edit it. And again, I don't need to go through criteria listing. I just go to customize because we've already done that. And I'm going to come up here and on my left side where it says additional content before we got to all the premium packages, it says custom pages. So when you click on the drop down arrow, here are all those custom pages I had. Here's the Zillow report. Here's the, um, because the way I saved it, I know what it is, the uh, market stats report. And here is your CMA criteria explained. Of course, I didn't change it for this particular property, but it's in there. But they're way down here in the bottom and I don't want them there. I want this one all the way up near the top, like I said. So it comes right after my title page. Um, sorry. This what is a CMA is a pre-formatted page. I love it. It also helps explain the difference between a CMA and how it's created. I like using that one. Um, I thought under introduction. Okay. And again, I have what a CMA, your CMA criteria explained. I move my contact me all the way down to the bottom. Um, if you had testimonials, you could load them in there. I'm getting rid of a lot of the stuff just so we don't have a very big CMA oh, to click through. Um, here's a good one. If, if you want some talking points as to why they should be a, a use a real estate professional. Again, this is pre-generated. Um, and the nice thing is it will always put whatever the CMA is that you address is right up here. Um, here's some good talking points if you're going to a for sale by owner and you want to talk to them about it. And here's just some things for you to kind of look through. Even seasoned agents, I suggest you look at this page. You may find some information that can help you talk. Uh, commission distribution, all this stuff, I'm getting rid of it just so we can have a little bit, um, a little bit more uh, shorter CMA when I go to show you what's in there. All right, we're going to leave that right there. Now, the thing is, before you clicked out of here, 
you have to save the template. And this is a key step most new people miss when they're going through Cloud CMA. You have to name the template. Right now there are 20 pages in it. If I don't name it Marie and George, or whatever I want to name it and save it. And it's now down here. There we go. Alphabetically. Right there. Okay, Marie and George. That means whenever I come back, it'll go back to my default CMA template which has all those pages in there I didn't want. It wouldn't have my custom pages. It will it will now only say this CMA for Marie and George as, as this one here, um, as I have it set up. As you can see, I have um, a short report that is 12 pages, a lot of tests. Um, I had one in here for an appraiser that I use, it's only nine pages. It has very, you know, just enough information. When I'm gonna meet an appraiser at the home, I, I have this quick little report that I pulled together that I give them just enough information. If they if they would like to accept it, I, I have it presented to them in a nice format. That's an appraiser's report and it looks really good. And so I already have that template saved that I can just pull up and use. But you have to select a template either in the very beginning or name it um, from, from the very beginning. And every time you make changes to it, make sure you go in and you save that template. Otherwise, it'll always, if I put in the appraiser's report right now as the template and I made all these changes and didn't go back and save the template, I know it's a little confusing. It would always default back to my nine page appraiser's report. That's the only thing you gotta get used to at the beginning. So now you got everything the, the way you want it. You've got the correct template in there. You hit publish report. Publish report does not send it to anybody yet. It just makes the report real. And we're going to let that spin through real quick. And then under CMA reports, you see all these reports that are here. CMA did something during the whole start of the COVID thing that is absolutely amazing. You can do a view live where if you click on that right now, you can actually send it live to your clients and present this to them in, in a Zoom meeting type format where they can interact with you and see you and everything. You just click on that right away and you can, um, you can send it to them like that. To check what it's going to look like, you click on view PDF and here's going to be your report if you were to send it out. It's 30 pages. Um, here are all the pages I talked about. They all come branded to you. Um, summary comparables, the listing chapters in there, here's the comparable homes. Uh, this one had, you know, all that. Here's everything on the homes. I took out some of the photo pages. Here's your analyst chapter. Again, if you want these headings in there to make it look more like a book format, you can. Um, unfortunately, I pulled out online value analysis, didn't land it back in. Again, here are all those pages I talked about. Here's my mark. Here's the PDF I lo uploaded of the market stats, so I can tar talk to them on what was going on. This was again from another uh, CMA I did for St. Clair Shores. I could talk to them about what was going on in in, um, in St. Clair Shores, and here was a Zillow estimate for that home. So again, you can customize your CMA report as much as you want, or as little as you want. So if you didn't like something that was in there, you come back and you hit Edit. And you don't have to go through update listings and all. Just go right back here to custom. Oh, I wanted to change this to uh, Shelby Township because I don't want it Utica, and I know they're not in Shelby, and I don't want them walking in there and saying we're actually in Shelby Township. And then right away, they're going to discount all the information you have if you can't even get their home address right. Um, just hit customize. And it takes you right there. You can, I wanted to add that uh, online value analysis page. Um, the photos, I wanted to add more photos under listings. So we're pretty good. Um, I don't want the comparable property, whatever I wanted to change. So again, I have to come back in and Marie and George template. We'll take it. Nope. Um, 
listings, sorry, more photos, and then the analysis, online value analysis. And again, this is where I have to save, um, save the template again as Marie and George. And you hit save and it should replace, yep, because it's named the same, it'll replace the other one. I took out two pages and added two pages, but we're going to have, uh, it, it. you'll see what I'm talking about. So there it is. Details, details. Okay. So now when I publish the report, it's going to look just a little bit different. It will have the online value analysis in there. And it'll have additional photos in there. I recommend if you're going to print this out and, and give it to your client that you spend the extra money and you, you go to one of the office supply stores and get a heavier weighted paper, print it two-sided. And because the color copiers don't bleed through as much with most standard office copiers that use a lot, it's not the quality of the print, it's the quality of the, uh, the, uh, the weight of the paper. And the thinner papers that a lot of us have in our, at our brokerages, it has a tendency to, it's a lot of ink on the page and they don't do real well. I always, when I go to print out a CMA, um, I go to one of the office supply chains and I have it printed out on a heavier weighted paper, like 28 pound or whatever. And then the ink doesn't bleed through. The pages are a little stiffer. They're a little glossier. And it's just a better presentation when I give it to my clients. So now I'm going to look at the PDF really quick. And I'll see that um, where I change the additional photos on the homes that had more than 12 photos, as you can see, there's another two or three pages of photos. This is where a report can get really, really long golf. So last time we had 30 pages and this time we have 39 pages. Um, here was that price page when I get down to it. Where is it at? Oh my Lord. Online value analysis is now in there. Sold property analysis. Here's where I did my suggested list price. Uh, I could have moved this page up to the beginning and all that. You can play with the report. Um, and, and when you do the suggested list price page, it takes these right here and lets you know um, a little bit about it. So another thing with, uh, once you have your report the way it is, you have a couple options with this report. If you click on the three dots in the upper right, you can you can also copy it as a live link, view it as a slideshow, um, copy slideshow, email the report. The, it, it, the slideshow is really nice if you bring your, if, let's say you're going to a listing appointment and you have a, you're good on a tablet and you want them to look at it through a tablet or if they're coming into your office and you can sync with one of your TVs in your office or your screens, you bring them in and it automatically generates a presentation for you. It's called a slideshow. Your control button is down here in the lower right. Uh, a, a darkened arrow tells you the direction to go. This is always to take you right back to home. Uh, it's pretty simple, just walk it through. And sold home, three listings. Now they can look at this stuff or swipe right or swipe left. It, it's uh, pending homes. If you go, if you go, um, sorry. On this property here, it's hard to see because the gray is right here. But if you click on this down arrow, it'll show you all the pictures for the homes. There's more photos and they can see all this and they can click on an individual photo and they can walk through like that. It's a really useful visual aid if, if um, you know, you want to send it to somebody as a link with a quick exp explanatory note that, hey, the controls are down in the lower right. If they want to go through it on their own or again, we can do the live link and show it all to them. So that's, uh, that's what you want to that's this button takes you back to home so that's what um that's what the slideshow is right there so they can view it live view it as a pdf or you can come in and edit it uh if you don't like something this was one i did a while ago oh i didn't like that sorry get rid of some of my reports Test class, I'm gonna delete this report, delete forever. 
Okay, so, and it does hold on to all of the stuff that you've done. Um, this is a CMA, and the only reason I want to show you this one is I included in there, um, did I include the right up in here? No, I did not. I don't have the write up in this one. So, and some of them I have a write up, and some of them I don't. So, anyways, here, here is just kind of what they look. Each one looks a little different from your other ones. Um, and you can, you have the ability to customize it, make it look like how you want. This one, I actually loaded a picture of the house that I found online, and I put it in here. Um, and it has just different information. Here's where their their CMA criteria explain. And this report just looked a little different than my other reports. I included the quick summary as well for them in here. At that point, uh, here was their Zillow estimate for that day. I had that in there so that they could see uh, the the Zillow estimate was 260 that day. We actually had it uh, listed a lot less than that because Zillow was a little high. So that's Cloud CMA and how you quickly go through it. One other nice thing. Um, that Cloud CMA offers you is again where your photograph is. If you click on that, here's where your settings are. This is where you want to check to make sure your information is all correct. Um, uh, somebody asked me, Mark, you asked me, do I put it in a folder or a binder? I'm I'm the uh, comb clip kind of guy. I like the way the combs go. I double side my stuff. I do a clear cover page on the front and a dark page on the back. And I leave that with my client as a takeaway. Um, I just leave it there for them. That's why also I don't like to put the price in there because I don't want them just to take that price. I want I my whole philosophy on a listing presentation mark is a little different. Um, I want them to come up with the price based on the information I give it, and they feel comfortable with it. Some agents like to leave the price. Some agents don't. That's my work. Uh, the CMA is, and I don't want them just to focus on the price page and then bring in four other agents and compare them only on the price page. So I comb mine, I put them in the comb binders. My uh, brokerage, I can also print it out at the printer and then come back to my brokerage. My brokerage has an area where we can we can do them in combs or spirals or whatever. I prefer those than a folder type uh, situation. That's my own preference. Your folder, your broker may want a different preference on how you want to do it or have none, in the, which case you can do it on your own. Um, here's where you come in and you check. Again, we're back in the um, settings, account settings. You check everything in here to make sure that your profile is correct how you want it, how your contact information is correct, and everything else like that. This is where you can change it in here. Um, anyways, the other cool feature about Cloud CMA besides uh, custom pages and account settings, real quickly, it's also part of our lead generation class and I'm gonna touch on it today. If you click on lead generation, it says, um, lead generation, what's my home worth? So if you're somebody who has a website or if you're an agent that posts on Facebook regularly and you're looking for content, all you have to do is uh, copy this link and that will give you the link that will bring everybody back to um, it, it'll it'll take this link it'll put it into Facebook for you and then from there people you can say hey if you want to know what your home's worth click here for a no cost uh, a comparative market analysis on what your home is worth and if I clicked on Facebook right now it would take me if my Facebook is loaded to my pro page this is what it was would look like I could add a little bit of verbiage in there and then post it to my professional page and then I would have it if a client clicked on this and clicked on what's uh, put in their address, all they need is their address and an email, and they will get a CMA. Some other um, sites out there make you put in a little too much information. The client gets a little nervous and they pull away from it. This is really cool because we have agents that have this on their um, on their web page on their front home page of their web page it's always there in the corner some people put it in their email signature and whatever it is anybody can click on it put in the enter your property address in an email they will get the cma and the beauty is you get a notification that someone wants to know more about their home and it gives you a contact point so that's a, just a quick little lead generation tool and you found that up in that's up in the corner lead generation 
that's a whole separate class. Right now, I just want to make sure you understand this is also where you find the custom pages to add to CMA. Uh, also, while we're in here real quick, you have a couple other flyer uh, tabs up here. If, if you were doing a buyer's tour, this prepares an excellent buyer tours for your client that pulls them all together with the property. Go in here and play with it. It's very similar to um, it's very similar to what you did for the CMA portion of it, where once it's loaded and it comes up, um, we're going to view it right now. But you go in and you edit it. Here's a buyer's tour I prepared where I was taking people on different homes. Um, and the nice thing is after each page, there's a comment page where they can write comments on everything. If you want to give this to your clients when you're taking them around, it's a very, very nice presentation. Looks very good, very professional for a buyer's tour. Um, again, if we wanted to edit it, Criteria listing, customize, publish. It's just like cloud, the, the CMA part. You can come here and customize what pages go in there, what pages don't go in there, and all that other stuff, um, similarly to what was on the, on the CMA side. There's also um, a flyer that is really nice. If you're a newer agent and you're asked to hold an open, if, and an agent said, hey, I have an open house. Do you want to hold it open this weekend? They agreed to it. You can come in here if your broker doesn't pro, um, provide flyers for you. You can create a flyer for yourself uh, that is branded to you for that property so that you, you know, I go into these open houses and I see an agent, a newer agent, hand me an open house flyer that is a listing agent's flyer with their card stapled over it. I'm like, why don't you just come take our CMA class so you understand how to do flyers? Again, here was a, um, a property I did, uh, it was my listing, and you can come in and change it. Oh, wait a minute, not there. This was a flyer I created with some information on it, different different pages. It was a single page flyer. It says, welcome home. This was actually a multi-unit rental property. Uh, I, you can go into Cloud CMA, just like everything else, hit the edit name it and customize it and again you have different options with how you want the front the flyer to look you have different layouts um there's one with one and the title and all kinds of different things if you play with these themes in here modern dark red if i went with a classic it changes it up a little bit differently gives you um, more options on your layouts here then. This is a good one that says welcome home with your image here and a QR code right here. Uh, dare to dream if you're doing a big massive uh, home or lakefront home or something like that. There's all kinds of things you can play with in here. The beauty of it is, is once you select one of these and you come in here, oh, it's loading, it's taking a while. You have the ability to go in and change the notes that are in there, and it only changes the notes on your flyer. It doesn't mess up the listing. So in there, I can put, you know, call, call me for more information, or here's my email address, or whatever. And you don't have to have that other agent's information in there. You can actually hand out your professionally prepared flyer at, uh, at an open house rather than just doing the old staple thing. So make that's, again, assuming you have permission from the, from the other agent to um, actually, actually hold the open house. So you have CMA is what started this whole class. When you're going on a listing appointment or just in general, someone's thinking of selling their home, you wanna prepare a, a professional CMA for them, buyer tour and flyer. We also have back here, we also have the other one, which was the quick summary for CMA, which is just kind of a one sheet kind of thing. Um, and back here, when you look under your MLS defaults spreadsheet, if school districts are an issue, come in here to go to fields, um, type up school, it should school district, hit add to your field, you can move it wherever you want to, right, right beyond zip code, hit save. Now the school district is gonna print right there. So Mark, to answer your question, I think it was Mark who asked, 
this is where you can see if you were looking at you know if you haven't made your selection yet and you saw several properties and two of them were outside of the school district and you don't want to use them just click on the unclick them on the box hit checked and it'll reconfigure everything without that property in there that way you can have everything within the same school district and you'll be good so it, we're not in class i talked for an hour and a half i really appreciate it there's a lot of information my suggestion is to create a, a cma on your home do a basic search around the area and then go in there and play with all the reports and see what can happen and see with everything else it's an amazing tool that tool that cloud cma has for us that you get as a member of my real source it helps separate you from other realtors and your goal is to become the trusted real estate advisor for those people when you're sitting down with them and demonstrate your value and your worth something that none of those um online electronic estimating programs can give to them and you do that by creating your value and worth by demonstrating your 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 knowledge of the local market area and the local conditions and and these are this is one of the great tools to help you with all that debbie it's all yours all righty thank you very very much chris i know there's a lot of information so i hope you've been catching the the chats that I've been throwing out as well. I know it's kind of hard to read a chat and listen to Chris at the same time. But over in the chat box, I did put a link to the short video on customizing your cloud CMA account. So I think, um, I don't know if it was Colleen or Lisa that did that class for me, which was really good. That is uploaded on our YouTube channel. Deborah also asked if I was going to be, if you guys would have access to this via a recorded session and yes indeed I will get that done here soon and that will be posted on our YouTube channel which is my real source media it's also organized by playlists so if you want everything CMA related there is a playlist called um, it, CMAs but I think it's spelled out and that's a great source of information because we don't do as many live webinars as we were simply because they are all loaded up but we are still continuing to do our live webinars and keeping that going and keeping the content fresh on our youtube channel and one more thing i'm going to interrupt real quick from your mls homepage, uh when you're here in paragon if you come over here to where it says mls you can find out some information that's going on through my real source here's where you have your class schedules if you want to sign up um and it's the webinar library they can also go to here debbie yes indeed if you click on the webinar library through mls you'll see all our webinars that are up there you can scroll through those and pick them all out easy to find see and there's and the playlist our, across the top too right there yep and our youtube channel and um also through here on, on, on the MLS part is, oh, help me out one, the, up here on the very top where it says MLS documents. If you click over here on the top next to your picture, not down here on the board part, it will take you right here where it comes down to MRS education. Um, these are kind of, as they come in, as we enter them in there, the, they're at there, so they're not in any kind of real order. So if you wanted to find out something on CMA, just come in here and do CMA and hit return. Hit return, thank you. Uh, here are all the stuff we have landed in there, have loaded up in there for uh, cloud CMA support or handout. So if it's after hours or it's later, you can't get a hold of anybody, or you've been trying something for two hours and you're just banging your head against the wall, try to find that. That's up in MLS documents or from the home page. Come over here to MLS. I'm going too quick. And come into webinar libraries. Between the two, you should be able to find enough information to get you through. Uh, all great tools that um, my real source offers to our, our, our member agents. Fantastic. And then also from our Facebook page, we have also started doing. You can schedule a one-on-one -on -one with one of our trainers or myself and uh, you pick a subject that you like and request a time and we'll get to you get that scheduled in a couple of days pretty awesome oh look and there's the link to our new quick tips videos section on the bottom left is there there as well that's been getting a lot of traction i think that one's been fun well, thank you very, very much, everybody. I will email the class afterward with a 
a link to today's video and also a link to the customizing your cloud CMA account and also a cheat sheet or two as well so you can have those right at hand without going and fetching them yourself even though Chris just gave you the tools to teach you how to fish to feed yourself that's our <laughs> big thing thank you guys for tuning in today and get, ladies and gentlemen for coming to my real source and you know uh, if you've got any questions reach out to Debbie what show you to get them answered or get you somebody who can help you and, and good luck to y'all stay safe thank you Chris all right all right bye everybody bye